Welcome to the Missions Podcast, the show that explores your hard questions on missions, theology, and practice to help goers think and thinkers go. Live from Together for the Gospel 22 in Louisville, Kentucky, I'm Alex Kochman, Director of Advancement and Communications with ABWE, with my co-host Scott Dunford here, Pastor of Redeemer Church in Fremont, California, and two important guests here today. Will you introduce them, please? Yes. At I'm least happy. one. Happy you. Yeah. At least two. <laughs> Paul Davis, president of ABWE, which is always great to have you on our show. And then, of course, Charles Smith, of course. vice president of yeah. Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. The yeah. only thing standing between me and my degree is Charles. That's right. Not really. Here we are. And the entire <laughs> project, but. Yes, yes. So it's really nothing to do with the work. No. Nothing to do with the work. I was hoping he would do the work, too. Because it's not yeah. happening. Yeah. Honorary yeah. demon. Yeah. Anyone? It's I, not a thing. That's kind of what I'm shooting for at this point. But anyway, it's really good to have you guys yeah. on. And yeah. especially here at, here at T4G, the last T4G. It's kind of surreal, isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah, it is. It is. We've been coming to these for a long time. How long have y'all come to T4G? This is only my second. Okay. I think it's my fourth, I think. Wow. 2004 so. was my first. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you've been coming for a while. That goes together yeah. to the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Before it grew up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Midwestern and for the church. A lot of our yeah. listeners and viewers may know. Um, a lot of them may not. Some of them might not be from a Southern Baptist context. So tell us a little bit about your institution that you serve and what you do. Yeah, so we're one of the six Southern Baptist schools in the Southern Baptist Convention, the largest Protestant denomination in the United States. Uh, we've got about 5,000 students. We do anything from certificates to graduate, or excuse me, undergraduate, graduate, and all the way up through PhD programs. Um, We've been there since 1957, so we're one of the youngest schools. Some of them are 160 years old now, so we're one of the younger. You know, the Southern Baptist Convention started in the South, and it kind of made its way all the way to Kansas, uh, and obviously for you guys, all the way out to California. Yes. So, yeah, I've been there 60 years. I've been there 10. Uh, I teach uh, for the church. It's kind of a resource arm, so uh, we have millions of people that come to a site every year to, to read articles, including from guys like, actually all three of you guys have contributed to the site, which is awesome. Uh, so thank you for that. But it's just a way for us to equip the church, which is what our slogan is. If you know anything about Midwestern, we yeah. exist for the church. It's kind of our, our rally cry. Um, so yeah. Tell us about, you, I know you teach, but you are in charge of a, a special PhD program. Yes. That, uh, that I think many of our listeners would be interested in. Yes, yeah, so we've got a new PhD in applied theology, and under that is leadership. And I, I designed that curriculum and, and will teach a lot of these classes. That actually starts this fall. Uh, I, I just got reports that we actually have students in it. I was, nice. I was nervous about so asking good. that question, sending that email. Has anybody actually applied to this program? Uh, and they have, so we're tickled about that. But our, our heart and my heart in that particular program is helping people see that leadership is a biblical doctrine. It's, it's yeah. a biblical idea, it's a mm -hmm. Christian idea. It's not something that we took or even redeemed from the secular world. It's something that I think came out of Genesis. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fundamentally about mission. We've talked about that some on y'all's podcast. Yeah. Uh, so I wanna help people see whether they're from a boardroom or from a missions agency, that all of God's children are called to take initiative for the glory of God and the good of others. So it'll be a whole PhD program of, of those sorts of things. So. So Dominion. 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 Right. Dominion. We're hoping you will do it. Uh, trying to get your your you know affirmation of that I've on this podcast. That paper that, <laughs> that it should be fun because Paul like has a lot times. of free time. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So. Right. You can do it. You can do it, and we can help. <laughs> he's earning. He's he's earning his doctorate. Yeah, that's right. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Field experience uh, right now. He applied for the honorary doctorate. Yeah. yeah. He, didn't, he didn't hear back yet. So. Those are harder than the regular ones, though. The honorary. Yeah. 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 So I mean. Being a student at Midwestern in the in the missions program, that's one of the things I noticed really quickly about about Midwestern is their love of missions. Yeah, you know, yeah. right on. You know, several of the buildings are dedicated to sure, to sure. missionary martyrs, and um, you know, just had a great experience. And I, so, how does a seminary cultivate a, a missions mentality? Because I think that is something that I feel kind of is in the DNA of Midwestern. Where does sure, that come from? sure. Well, for us, I think a lot of people here for the church and they tend to think about the local church that they're at and the, the local congregation and, and all those things are appropriate, but we, we mean the global church and, and implied within that, you guys know as a missions agency, we're really not merely about making conversions, but doing that through planting healthy local churches. Mm -hmm. And so 
part of the, the if there's a sub tagline of for the church, it's kind of being able to articulate, hey, this is actually a missional call, right. not just to your neighbor, but to the nations. Uh, and so I think for us, it starts with the vision. It's, it, it's followed by the faculty or the faculty that you're hiring fired up about um, bringing the gospel to bear in their neighborhood and the nations. Uh, and then in your curriculum, who are the, who are the books, um, the authors you're reading, what are the assignments, um, you know, those sorts of things. Do you have a robust evangelism program on campus, which we do? I mean, we yeah. still have students that every week go door to door all around campus, which I know is not the vogue way to share the gospel anymore. Sure. Oh, you, I've um, met students that are studying Arabic simply. Sure. They live in Kansas City. That's right. They're in seminary, but they want to, they're preparing at that sure. level. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. So, so that's a big deal. We do obviously overseas trips and, yeah. and things like that all the time. That's, that's a big part of it. But I don't think you ever get beyond just the missional zeal of the culture on campus. And you guys have done a good job of that at ABWE. Uh, but I think that's the secret sauce of any organization is the culture. And I think in a, a large degree that rises and falls with the holiness and missional zeal of your president. You know, mm -hmm. it starts mm -hmm. there. It's more than that, but it's not less than that. And I think for us, we're, we're blessed with Dr. Allen. He's, I told somebody the other day, he's 10 years in and he's got more passion today, uh, I think for the vision, for the ministry than he did 10 years ago. And I've been with him 15 years, than, than 15 years ago. And that's sadly uncommon mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of people. So for us, you know, it's rallying around Jesus, but humanly speaking, it's rallying around a vision and a faculty and leadership and, you know, all the rest in our context. So I want to ask that question conversely and figure out, okay, so we know it, it, there's a lot of good work that can be done as far as building a missional culture on sure. campus at a place like Midwestern. There's the flip side of the need to do that, though, and how difficult that usually is. Before I ask that, though, because you're talking about the leadership that you've seen, obviously yeah. leadership is your passion and you tie that to mission. So is there a way to define leadership briefly with regard to missions? So if you're a missionary, or if you're thinking about missions, but you don't consider yourself a leader, what would you say, sure. what is it about leadership that's so tied up with mission? Sure. Well, I think in Western culture, we tend to think about leadership as influence. Maxwell defines leadership yeah. as influence, and that's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a really helpful handle. And obviously we've seen it's helped millions of people understand leadership. I, I think one of the logical conclusions of that can be that if I'm not seeing fruit, or to put it another way, influence in, in my entrees into sharing gospel or, or yeah. moving to California and trying to plant a yeah. church or moving to the Middle East. And think about how many of your missionaries now are not seeing fruit, but because they're Western, they see success as being a leader or not, having influence right. or not. And I think when you look at scripture, you see leadership as someone we define it as taking initiative, taking a step towards need. Uh, and in our case, lostness, but taking initiative. And why do we do that? Uh, Matthew 22, for the glory of God and the good of the world. Uh, so we, we pray for fruit and influence. We, we hope our churches grow. We hope people accept the gospel and, and there are new fields planted and things like that. Um, but I think the fundamental call is obedience, is to step into what called, God's called us to do. And sometimes that's going, sometimes that's sharing. So, so we've tried to wrap leadership, and I say we, just our, our school and the book I'm writing, wrap leadership more around initiative and obedience than fruit and influence. Yeah. Um, and that's a false dichotomy, and I, I get that. And, but I think so many people live under the weight and shame of, I stepped out, I did something, the Lord didn't immediately grant influence. I mean, think about the way Twitter affects just the, the conscious yeah. conscience of, of Americans. You know, how many people are following me? How did people respond to this sort of thing? I think a lot of people just go, well, it didn't immediately catch on. The Lord's not blessing it. I'm not a leader. And what happens is they retreat into the shadows and the sidelines. So what I'm trying to say is, hey, it's, it's actually much smaller. It's, it's much bigger, but also much smaller in God's trying to call you to take that first missional step by taking initiative for the glory of God and the good of the good of the world. So I don't know if that's helpful, mm. but uh, that's what I'm trying to do. It, it is helpful. And, and here I'll give, give like a little personal story of why I think that's so helpful is, you know, there's a church planter in my city. We've be, we become good friends. Yeah. This guy's super gifted. I mean, a, a mega church in Charlotte wanted him to come be their main pastor. Wow. Well, he felt called to our city. Well, he's He's planting a church in the hardest place to plant a church. He's doing it in the hardest way possible. He's trying to reach lost people. Yes. 
you know, I, I look at him and say, he's a guy who lives so intentionally. Yeah. He, he's sharing the gospel effectively with his neighbors. You know, we had a Hindu family that had a child washed up to sea while they're on the beach. It was oh, a horrible my goodness. story. The guy was in their home, like, the next sure, day. Like, sure, You know, but to remind him, like, what you're doing is of eternal significance. Yes. But it's hard when even our Christian community yeah. is saying, no, actually, he'd be a great leader if he had a thousand people. In his that's church. right. Where's your platform? He studies in a house yeah. church with twenty people. Most of them are right. believers. That's yet, right. You know? That's right. That's hard. Yeah. Well, how many people in Scripture does God grant them to see the fruit, even in their lifetime, let alone immediately? I mean, think about Elijah. Yeah. What like that? I mean, you, you, even Christ, in yeah. in a lot of significant ways, you die and you have to trust the Lord for the harvest. Yeah. Uh, but if you define, hey, I need to be a leader to be successful in America, and leadership is a big platform and influence and fruit, oftentimes uh, people won't go to the ends of the earth and the hard places because they know, man, I'm not sure I can put my identity on the line, my success and failure as a human on the line. Yeah. Um, so just trying to reorient, hey, the leadership is that faithful next step towards Jesus. How does movement fit into that? You know, yeah. often leadership is defined moving from point A to point B or, you know, uh, moving a people from point A to point B. That ties into fruit bearing, right? Yeah. So so how, how does that play into the initiative? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think when you look to scripture, even uh, Crawford Loretz, who was just one of my favorite preachers, he would say that, that scripture is a story of movement and mission mm -hmm. or mission and movement. But he would say, man, from the opening pages of scripture, you see God speaking creation into being. And in all these accounts, uh, uh, revealing himself to God's people, S Philippians 2, sending Christ. There, there's an initiative on the part of God to both create creation, mm -hmm. but also step mm -hmm. into the gap that we've created through our sin. And so I think our call as image bearers is to follow him in moving. And so the, I think mission and movement are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're following God and taking the same steps that he did. Again, back to Philippians 2. So are we really reflecting the image of God best when we're taking initiative because he took initiative? A hundred percent. It's, it's like more that. than that but it's not less than that. Right. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to be legalistic about that. Right. Uh, right. Our first call is to love God, not to move, not right. to lead, not to do anything right. like that. But that's why that's a critical piece of that definition because we, we don't take initiative for the sake of initiative and movement. Mm -hmm. uh, we take it for the glory of God and that's a helpful guardrail to our leadership to go, does this bring glory to, what brings glory to God? That's a, that's a leadership question, yeah. I think, fundamentally. Uh, and is this to the good of our neighbor and sometimes um, there are things that are to the good of our neighbor that they may not think are for their good at that point. I mean, think about some of yeah. the cultural issues. Uh, so it's a complicated mm -hmm. thing, but I think those are two, um, I'm bad at bowling and I need the bumpers. Right. You know, right. those are two definitional bumpers that I think the movement fits within. And, and man, it's my stepping towards need, towards lostness, towards the gap between what is and what should be. Does this bring God glory, and is it for the good of my neighbors? Then I think we'd go, and that's biblical leadership that's honoring the Lord, and it's moving. We were joking about this earlier, but this ties in so great with the Great Commission. Yes. Because the command is not to make disciples, it's to go yes. and make disciples. That's right. And that go yes. is initiative. Take, yes. That's take right. the initiative to go. That's right. Make disciples of all nations. Sure. Right? Sure. A hundred percent. You're kind of laying that foundation, which leads us back to the issue of, in a seminary context, sure. you're teaching people to love and obey God and love neighbor. You're teaching them to image forth God by going out on mission, taking yes. initiative, taking leadership, which means taking responsibility and moving into that gap, yes. right, where there's an opportunity or there's a need. Um, and yet, I, I'd imagine you've seen, I think the trend overall is that people that go to a seminary yeah. uh, or to a Bible college or a, or a Christian university end up yes. wanting jobs in the states. That's right. They want high or paying jobs. Or on a campus. Or on a campus, yeah. 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 yeah, and not going to those places of greatest need. Sure. And knowing that missions is, is at the heartbeat of, of Midwestern, yeah. what do you guys do? Yeah. How, how do you see more people taking that choice of, you know, I know I have student loans to pay back, but, yes. you know, rather than competing yeah. for the same pastoral jobs that you know, 200 other people on average are applying for. Sure. I'm gonna take the missionary role that nobody really wants. Sure, sure. 
Yeah, there's a lot of practical things. You mentioned student loans and stuff like that, and I know that's not what you're talking about, but but there are a lot of realities like that, uh, keeping tuition low and all that. But let's assume we're working really, really hard on that. Oh, but that's important, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge part of it. And, and we have so many people that do, they take out a ton of debt, and for that very reason, they can't take the church that they're most likely mm. Uh, going to have mm-hmm. when they come out, which, by the way, is the normative church in America of 100 people and, you know, all, all those sorts of things. But I think for us, it is continually being reminded and reminding our students that knowledge puffs up and pride comes before the fall. The natural temptation of education is is honestly arrogance, even missional arrogance. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Satan uniquely preys on seminary students, especially the higher you go up. You get a PhD or a DMIN. It's a dangerous, it really is. I mean, There's the something Piper, very humbling about it, too. Yeah, no, there is. There is. That's but, why Scott hasn't gone all the way. He's right. trying to stay humble. Stay humble. Yeah. yeah, he's well, going too smart. Yeah. For a lot of guys, it's like the first time you get a DMIN or you get a PhD and you go, man, maybe this church is too small for me. Yeah. Or maybe this, mm-hmm. you know, man, I got a lot to offer. And man, yeah. I, yeah. I was really sharp in that seminar. And the, you know, those sorts of things. <laughs> and they may not even think that but other people will tell them that that's right oh, yeah that's and right you begin believing what you sure. hear right yeah that, that's exactly right so <laughs> I think that's a big deal for us one of the things we're uniquely tied into is identity uh, identity language on campus and I, I think that's a very biblical term but but who are we fundamentally and and even more whose are we fundamentally and if we're um, bought with a price from Christ, we, we're risen in Him, our life is no longer ours but His, those sort of, like if we actually mean that, um, and that's something that we have to put on every day, right, and, and sanctify, sanctify ourselves and crucify our flesh, but if you believe that um, and we're constantly pouring that into students and reminding them of that, we hope that that generates more of a, a sacrificial missional environment. There's also a case yeah. to be made for it too. Why are you enrolling in seminary? Sure. Are you going because you like to tinker around with biblical sure. ideas or <laughs> yes. theological things? Because yes, then you're not going to be the person that's the risk taker, yes. right? Yeah. If you're going because you love souls, sure. then that's whether right. you're pastoring them here at home, yeah. whether you're reaching them abroad yeah. or somewhere in between, yeah. it's going to drive you differently. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're saying this and I'm sitting here looking at a picture of Tom Schreiner. Uh, on the Southern Seminary thing, and I, but I think of like how actually deeper you go in theology. I think of a guy like Tom, yeah. and you know a Tom, a pastor theologian. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh my word! Like yeah. he's so humble, Shepherd's even heart. though he's got, even though he's going, he's gone so deep into scripture that it actually is humbled. In his yes, yeah. yeah. And where people meet him, like oh, I want to, I want to be friends with Tom. Yeah, you know, I'll brag Dr. on his Trump. family. His son, yeah, uh, is in, in fact, one of our pastors in our small group, yeah. and and he would be embarrassed for for me to say this, but I can, I can brag on him. He may be the most missionally driven guy I know. Mm. Uh, and in a lot of super, uh, he's not tweeting about it, you would never know, but man, neighbors, inviting people to church, engaging with Catholics in his, you know, on his yeah. road, those sorts of things, uh, supporting missionaries. And it, he would say it's driven by doctrine. It's the deeper I go in the book of Acts, man, I'm, I'm convinced of this, this is real, this is the most important thing. I mean, we've had really cool things, like opportunities, hey, come to our house, we're gonna do this cool thing. And they, maybe it's they just don't like us, <laughs> but oftentimes it's, hey, we can't, we, we wanna, this kind of a bunch of seminary people, we're gonna do Halloween on our street because there's a bunch of lost people, and, and he means it, he's, he's not playing yeah. church. And I really do believe it's an authentic expression mm-hmm. of doctrine. Yeah. Um, so that stuff's just super, super important. I just think you have to be, as scripture reminds us, to be on guard uh, as we ingest those things. It should make us humble. I just think uh, unchecked in our flesh, it has the opposite effect, including yeah. me. I mean, I, I, uh, everything I'm saying is because I, I walk with that. I experience mm-hmm. that every day. We're, we're in a really impressive I mean, frankly, guys, like where we are today in a big, impressive hall with 12,000 people, that's a dangerous place for your heart. That stage is a dangerous place. Um, The power, the politics of all this, it, it, you know, I I just think we have to be super on guard. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, that's a good note to end on and a good note to carry with us throughout the rest of the conversations we're having all throughout T4G. How can people follow both of our guests? Um, starting with uh, Paul, since Charles spoke last. You can follow me on Twitter, at P. Davis Davis. P. Davis underscore Davis. P. Davis underscore Davis. He's not just Paul Davis, he's Paul Davis Davis. Yeah, or we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. 
PaulLDavis.com, too. Yes. Yeah. Make sure you put the L in there, and Charles, how can people get more of your content? Yeah, Twitter's great. Charles W. Smith Jr. Uh, on Twitter. So that's is great. Your, is your dad senior? Is he on Twitter? Is that why I hope not. I hope hand? not. <laughs> <laughs> I got that in Google. I got on early enough that there, it's my real name. Yeah, uh, yeah Charles yeah. Smith. That can't yeah. be your real no, name. No, it's me. Yeah. It's me. I'm yeah. still there. Well, um, and I, I'm hoping that we get an opportunity, Alex. This, this is brand new information for Charles, but we're going to try to get him. Breaking to, news. To test him. Live on the air. And his missional yeah. impulses by trying to convince him to come to the Bay Area and Whoa. Hey, All right. right. Wow. I, keep, I keep trying to entice him. Wow. But I, He's I just have, going for it. I don't, I don't have the. If he was a real leader, he'd take the initiative. Yeah, right. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to end right now. And thank you for Good. watching the Missions Podcast. And we'll be back soon with more content from C4G22.